There's a term in products called brand toxicity. And what it basically means is kind of no matter what you do, no matter what features you add, no matter what marketing you do, there's still this underlying kind of gut reaction from your audience to insult it, to be skeptical of it, to, you know, be resistant. And the approach you use to get yourself out of that is usually much different than a typical marketing approach. You have to address some of these, these responses head on. You can't just ignore them anymore. So what does this have to do with comics? Well, I think comics is really in this position now. I think in many ways the, the brand, the idea of comics is borderline toxic, if not all the way. Now, I want to explain what I mean by that, because this isn't a video where I just go off and insult comics and things are bad and big creators, bad social media, none of that. I'm actually looking at the product and the business of the industry itself. Hey everybody, this is Perch. When you have a product and it doesn't land with a group of people, it's very important, companies do this all the time, to try and figure out what the true problem is. Is the true problem that you've just got a segment of the fans that aren't going for it? Like, for example, the clone storyline in Spider-Man was kind of reviled and disliked among Spider-Man fans. Some people liked it, some people didn't. But it wasn't boiling over into you know other comics that the company was publishing. The X-Men line was going quite strong. Several other things were working for Marvel. It wasn't like uh, this, this feeling was pervading you know, everything. Today, I think we're in a very different story where the knee-jerk reaction from a pretty decent group of people is that things are bad. Things are being destroyed. Uh, actions that companies and publishers and creators are taking uh, are, are being done for political reasons or selfish reasons or, or reasons that are not about comics. And I... It could set up a really kind of negative place where now, if, if, even if the comic companies try and do something, try and uh, take some positive steps, it's met with skepticism. A new title that's announced is immediately met with resistance from not just a few, but a decent portion of the fans. On social media online, we tend to look at kind of what's going on with Twitter and like, oh, there's some people who are, you know, anti-comic books and there are people who are anti-anti-comic books. <laughs> and these two, these two sides fight. But in many cases, these two groups are, are not that interesting. If you look at comic sales as a whole, if you look at the people who are buying comics, look at how the business is evolving, you see that there is a problem with people starting to tune out of the traditional publishers. Now, before you say, well, that's inevitable with any product, it's really not. Lots of products have survived for decades and decades and managed to reinvent themselves, managed to capture audiences, managed to kind of change who they are as a brand. It's not a, you know, a, a, like, a, like a human lifespan where at some point it's going to die and you just have to kind of be prepared for that moment where if there's nothing you can do, it can't be saved. But one of the indicators that tells me we've got this problem really badly is when, for example, I remember about a year ago or so, there were people who were making the comment that Marvel Comics was about to be sold and shut down by Disney. And I think Cosmic Book News, which is like, you think about like Bleeding Cool and then Less Reliable, and that's probably what you got there with that site, uh, which is kind of, you know, it really boggles the mind, come to think of it. But anyway, they published this article saying, could Disney sell uh could disney sell marvel and the reality of it's one of those kind of clickbaity headlines that the answer is well yeah disney can sell everything disney could sell their theme parks if they wanted to they won't because they make money or there's strategic reasons to have it and there was nothing in the article that really identified that uh, this was a serious conversation other than the classic uh an unknown source told us that disney's considering it it's like okay i don't believe that person exists but fine Anyway, the story was going on and lots of people were making videos about the death of the comic industry. That within two years or so, there wouldn't be comics being printed and comics were definitely dying and it was bad. And a number of pros were posting, you know, basically the numbers, the sales numbers, showing that no, things were going up, it was healthy and, and kind of, you know, this, this, these ideas that the comic industry is in trouble is, is a fantasy. It's a paranoid kind of thing based in no reality.
And in fact, I was on a thread, and I don't know how I got tagged into it with these individuals, but Kurt Busiak and Ron Mars were in this thread. And I said, yeah, you know, the, the, the logic that they're using to draw this conclusion that the industry is dying is faulty. It, does, it doesn't make any sense. I said, you can kind of poke holes in it very, very quickly just using hard numbers. And I don't remember if it was Busiak or, or Mars uh, said, well, yeah, but you'll never convince these people. They're, they're determined to, to be negative. They're determined to, to say that it's, it's broken of a system. And I'm like, oh, he's, he's not wrong. There are people who, no matter what evidence is presented, are going to call it a broken system. But now fast forward to today, or rather about one week ago, where DC announces some layoffs. And amazingly enough, you had a lot of people from the, in the industry, people who on a regular basis will call out uh, kind of the naysayers as being too negative, too pessimistic, posting things like, the comic industry is dead as we know it, DC will be, you know, will not publish comics come January, that, uh, the, you know, this is, this is it, this is the end of comics, everything else. Including some of the same people who, who were kind of laughing a year ago at others who said the same. Now, what changed? Uh, really not much. Now, before you go, what, wait, wait, wait. No, not too much. People are getting laid off. Jobs are changing. Strategies are evolving all the time. What happened to DC is certainly a different event, but it's not the catastrophic kind of uh, nightmarish event that some are portraying. Now, again, just to be 100%, 100% clear, because this is stuff that typically triggers people, I'm not saying that the events that happened weren't bad. I'm not saying that wasn't tough for people. I'm not saying that it's a new you know, hurdle for comics. But what I am saying is that the conditions, meaning two large corporations owning the two largest publishers and not having comics as a clear part of their business strategy, it's the same today as it was a year ago. That hasn't changed. So it's telling that you've got people who can swing from everything is great. Oh, look at the people saying the comic industry is dying. What a bunch of idiots to, oh my God, it's coming to an end. It's coming to an end in five months. Because that's what we watched. It's very, very interesting to watch people move from point A to point B so rapidly. That's the part that's not normal. And that's the part that suggests we have brand toxicity going on within comics. There's a natural inclination right now for people to look at comics and assume it's going to fail. That's the core problem that we're facing. And frankly, the only way to combat this situation is by addressing it head on. When a brand gets toxic or an industry gets toxic, you can't close your eyes and pretend for that to go away because people's default behavior is to assume you're on the wrong track. That's what's helping with comics. When we're presented any kind of news, hey, here's a new title. Hey, here's a cancel title. It all leads back to the same place. Look again at DC. DC announces that they're going to cancel some books. Well, a lot of people have been saying they had too many books on the shelves anyway, so this is good news, right? No, wrong. That's an indication that they're failing. DC announces that they're adding some books. Oh, well, this is clearly a sign that they're failing and desperate for cash. It, it's... It, it, when everything cuts the same negative way, it means you've got a deeper problem. Now, what we don't know about comics is we don't know how many people are truly dissatisfied with it, how many people are buying because they're collectors and they just are continuing to collect because that's what they know how to do, how many people are kind of assuming that it's going to pick up at some point. We don't know these answers. So how do you go about erasing brand toxicity? Well, biggest thing you have to do is stop pretending it doesn't exist. And this is the trap that a lot of businesses find themselves in. It's certainly the trap that comics finds itself in. It's where it's okay when you have a few problems to kind of deny them because you don't want to make them bigger than they are. You also want to be careful not to give too much of a voice to a tiny percentage of maybe malcontents or weirdos or whoever they happen to be. You know, there's that statement, and I know it's popular in comics right now, of like every customer matters. Well, it's mostly true. But you, in any product, you typically have a small percentage, a small slice of customers that are just angry, trolling, bitter, who knows. And it's important to try and assess, is that tiny percentage of fans, is it indicative of a larger group that maybe just isn't saying anything? Or do you have just a handful of people who like to complain? Both are viable scenarios, but I think in comics right now, we can definitively state that it's not just a tiny percentage that has problems.
We see creators have problems. We have see people in and out of the industry have problems. We see fans have problems. We see sales that are, in many cases, anemic. Maybe they launch a title, but you see an immediate drop-off. You see a struggle. But what we also see in terms of the leadership from the big two is either a you know ignoring this or a flat denial. This is why I wince whenever I see Joe Casada saying things like, oh, the comic industry is strong. Don't listen to those people. That's great. It's good to show confidence. It is. As a leader of a company, you want to exude confidence. You want to exude that you're, you know, you're on the right track. You want to put that good step, that good foot forward. The challenge is if you do that and the kind of the world doesn't support you, if you slipped into this toxicity standpoint, then you, you're just, you sound like a fool. You're quickly dismissed as somebody who's out of touch. And that's the challenge we have right now. There are people all around comics who believe that the leaders are out of touch with what's going on. Now, they all have different reasons, and this is the kind of the red herring always in these cases. Lots of people will come up with reasons why things are off track. Maybe the money isn't good, maybe comics are too expensive, maybe it's the politics involved, whatever it is. That actually, that reason is far less important than the fact that people have a negative view of your brand. It goes back to, it doesn't really matter why they're mad. It's that they're mad. And again, if, if it's a tiny group, you could largely dismiss it. But that's not where we're at. The clear indicators are when you see people who will one day defend comics as being in great shape, less than 30 days later, claim the whole industry is falling apart. Those kinds of swings indicate that your position is fragile. It's fragile to the point that it, people slip into negativity very, very rapidly. Another interesting thing about products and businesses, you can slip into negativity far faster than positivity. Meaning the work it takes to get a positive view of your brand is typically significantly higher than what it takes for people to lose confidence in your brand. And again, that's where comic finds itself. So not to be a broken record, but it is something that the publishers have to start addressing. They have to you know, acknowledge the fact that this industry as a whole, not necessarily specifically Marvel or DC or anything else, they've got to acknowledge that this industry has some significant problems. By the way, it's, it's why, by and large, when comic companies come up with kind of a no-nonsense, hey, let's just get some comics in, in people's hands. Like, take, take an example of Todd McFarlane. He gives some pretty benign comments about how comics it means a lot to him, how he wants to grow it, how he's open to things, and, and is interested in, in having a bigger world. He got a ton of praise from the consumers. Not necessarily some of his peers, there's a lot of jealousy there, but from consumers, they liked what they heard. It's because he didn't deny there were problems, he offered suggestions, he didn't get into the details, like he didn't go in there and say, well, it's because of this hiring practice or that hiring practice or this specific writer who is, you know, mean on, on Twitter. He instead simply said, there are problems, absolutely, we've got to start fixing them, here's a couple ways to do it. That's a healthy approach to starting to solve brand toxicity. Otherwise, you are either just denying it or you're jumping at the wrong things. It is time for somebody at Marvel, in particular Marvel, because they are the industry leader, to step up to the plate and start acknowledging some of this stuff head on. And in doing so, you ever heard the person who gives like the the uh, backhanded compliment or the half-hearted apology? Like, oh, you know, there's a lot of problems like that terrible group of people over there that's constantly trolling me. No, you leave that part out. You just acknowledge, hey, there's a problem. I'm going to do better. We're going to do better. We're going to try some new things. That's what people want to hear. They don't really want to hear why something is broken. They want to hear your theories as to where the problems originated from or whose fault this is. They just want to have some confidence that things can get better. If you want people to stop having a gut reaction that things are coming apart, and again, all people, including people who work for your own company, if you want people to have confidence in the business, you need to show a plan forward, not wallow in who's responsible for this. That's a, a game that goes nowhere. But I do think comics has this problem. Now, what's interesting is it's a perception problem. I think at the same time, comics will continue to get made. I think, as I talked about before, there's many, many different options for people to produce comics right now. So we have all the things going for us in a lot of ways. 
Why, why this problem? This is a perception problem, but it's a perception problem that has to be addressed. It can't be ignored. Anyway, what do you think? Do comics have just an overall brand negativity kind of toxicity problem? And if so, how would you go about fixing it? And if I'm wrong, tell me that too. Anyway, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications if you like to be bothered. Follow me on social media at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.